So we've talked about different kinds of step growth polymers, and we've talked about uh, molecular weights and degrees of polymerization associated with uh, step growth polymerization processes. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the kinetics involved uh, in these uh, kinds of reactions. And this is important because we want to connect the parameters like the concentrations of monomers and other components in the reaction mix uh, and the rate constants associated with their reactions to the properties of the polymer that will be produced during the reaction. And so as a way to think about this, remember uh, we talked about nylons as just an example of a typical uh, step growth polymer where we have uh, two uh, monomer components that uh, join uh, to form a repeat unit and a condensation product. So if we want to express a rate of reaction associated with this process, uh, remember that we can think about what are the components. So our components are A and B, the two different monomers, I'll call them A and B, uh, and those go to produce uh, the polymer. So the rate of reaction we can express as a rate of production of polymer or rate of consumption of these monomer units. All of those will be related to the rate of the reaction process that's taking place. The rate of production of the polymer Sometimes we can, it's more convenient to relate that to the rate of production of these linkage groups. Uh, and, and the reason for that is, again, uh, when the progress of the reaction is being monitored experimentally, often techniques like spectroscopy are used that probe the chemical bond structures. Uh, so looking at wavelengths that are associated with these structures can provide a way to quantify uh, the process uh, as the reaction unfolds. We can express this quantitatively in terms of a rate law as follows. I can say that the rate of polymerization is equal to minus the rate of change of the concentration of monomer A, or that that's equal to minus the rate of change of the concentration of monomer B. Uh, and I have a minus sign because remember that these uh, monomers A and B are being consumed. So the rate of change of concentration is negative. Uh, so I add a negative here to give me a positive rate of polymerization. Now you can imagine that these processes could be complicated, uh, but we're just going to make some simple assumptions uh, to get some initial uh, insights into the process. So we're going to assume that uh, the functional groups on the monomers have equal reactivities. Uh, so that means they can be expressed in terms of a single rate constant. Uh, there's equal stoichiometry. So in other words, we have equal amounts uh, of A and B uh, in our mix, uh, and that we have first order kinetics with respect to monomer A uh, and monomer B. So with those assumptions in mind, we can consider a case uh, that's uncatalyzed. So uh, what I mean with that is that we don't add an additional chemical component in order to start the reaction or to keep the reaction going. So in that case, I can express the rate of polymerization as equal to some rate constant K times the product of the concentrations of monomer A and B. Now, since I've assumed equal stoichiometry, I can simplify this by calling those concentrations equal to a common quantity C. So then when I do that, I end up with an expression that the rate of change, or the rate of consumption of monomer is equal to this rate constant times C squared. Now, this is a differential equation that I can solve by integration. I can get dc over c squared on the left-hand side and the other terms on the right-hand side. So then I can integrate on the left-hand side from the initial concentration to the concentration at some time t. And I obtain the following equation. 1 over c minus 1 over c naught equals kt. Uh, or I can rearrange it uh, to get an expression in terms of the product or the ratio c naught over c. And I see that that is linear with time. So basically 1 over the concentration uh, of, the, um, of the reagents scales linearly with uh, time. Okay, so notice that um, I can also relate this ratio, C0 over C, to quantities that we've already determined. So notice that these are concentrations like uh, molar concentrations, for example, moles per liter. Uh, and so that's a number, number per unit volume. So if I substitute that in, I can equivalently express this concentration ratio to a number or a molar ratio. And I have expressions for these. I know the initial number of molecules and not, and the number of molecules that are present at some time that are unreacted 
uh, is equal to this quantity, the initial number times the probability that a reaction has not occurred yet. And this is equal to one over one minus P. So you might recognize this as the Carruthers equation uh, that we uh, already talked about. Okay, so if we substitute that in, uh, then we can exp ex obtain an expression for the, um, uh, the kinetics in terms of this extent of reaction. So we could find how does the extent of reaction vary as a function of time, uh, and how can I tune that uh, by uh, changing the concentration of monomer uh, and the rate constants associated with the reaction. Now I can consider another case uh, that's uh, catalyzed. So in this case, we have to add a third component to the reaction mix, a catalyst, uh, in order to um, you know, make the reaction work or even you know, accelerate the reaction. Uh, but this is relatively uh, straightforward to incorporate because usually um, we assume that we add uh, a large amount of catalyst. So we add so much catalyst that uh, over time the concentration remains relatively constant uh, in our reactor. Uh, so if that's the case, then this is just basically a constant, this concentration of catalyst that's introduced into our rate law. So we can incorporate that into an equivalent rate constant that is equal to the product of the rate constant of the reaction between the monomers times the catalyst concentration. So when we do that, because it's just a constant, we end up with the same mathematical formulation that we had previously uh, we just have a different rate constant that also includes the catalyst concentration. So we get exactly the same result uh, with the caveat that our rate constant uh, is defined a little bit differently.